Okay, welcome back everyone. So today I just want to do a quick one on uh, a truck shifter tutorial. Not really, just a more of an overview of how to do a cheap and affordable, easy truck shifter. So it's got the high, low selector, your high range, low range. And basically this was like a $30 off AliExpress. That's Australian, so it was actually quite cheap. And it came with just a four, four pin four pin plug on the end, which seemed very simple to then hook up to an Arduino Micro. So these, this is just running the AM Studio um, sketch for the button box. And you can probably just, so it's just using the button matrix setup, but yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I always hot glue the USBs because these are notorious for peeling off. They're quite badly made and these are a cheap board, but they're not very cheap when you have to keep replacing them every two months because every time you pull the USB out, you rip the whole the <laughs> the port off the pads. So always hot glue that on or, or Araldite or anything really. Um, so what we'll, what we'll go through, this is just essentially plugs into USB and we'll add two buttons to your to your computer. Now, if we one thing I've noticed was this high low selector um, where is it? So if we pop this open, it, the the button was getting stuck, right? Now, if you have a look in in there, in there was a um, little capacitor joining those two. Now the button would activate and then stick on and it was getting really annoying so I popped this open and I cut that out and now the button works as intended flawlessly. So that's the one thing you'll have to do mod this. It's pretty easy. This just clips in like so and beautiful. It's actually quite, quite nice quality. It's got the rubberized Nice rubberized feel to it. Buttons sound nice. So yeah, it's actually um. And the last thing I did was I made an adapter. This goes to a VNM shifter, so it's an eight mil shaft here. I'm sure you could adapt this to fit anything really. And um, yeah, just a bolt takes through, picks up the the metal tube inside. It reduces it to an 8 mil here and I've got a couple um, M3 inserts to just when I put it on the shifter I'll just yeah use some screws to hold it in place it's so a pr pretty straightforward pretty simple and effective shifter and and really cheap actually so I'll, I'll show you what it looks like when we plug it into the computer I'll show you the buttons working and hang on, I'll just take the camera with me Excuse the mess at the moment. I'm I'm into my quads, quadcopters as well, and I've just gone digital. So I've been setting up my digital and I've just got a new Radio Master transmitter. So anyway, what we do here is plug it in. It comes up. And as you can notice, it's called Truck Range Selector. And if we go to Properties, and we click the switch, High, Low, Beautiful. Two buttons working flawlessly. Now, the one thing you might notice is it's actually called Truck Range Selector. This is a quite inter interesting thing I picked up because most games won't allow you to have more than one Pro Micro at a time connected to the computer because they call them Pro Micros. And if you've got more than one, the games don't like it or for whatever reason, the computer doesn't like it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll show you how to upload the sketch, change the name of your micro. So it's actually gonna be easier to, to, to distinguish between your micro boards now. And, and yeah, you basically give it a different ID code as well. So it's a little bit of fiddling around, but it's actually not too hard. And once it's done, it's done. 
and you can have multiple Pro Micros connected to your computer. So I think that's going to be probably the most beneficial thing out of this video, to be honest. And um, so I'll run you through that now and then we'll hook it up and we'll go drive some trucks. I used to drive road trains myself, so my dad had a truck company and this is my printers if you want to have a look. Oh. Anyway, I'll put up a, I had a photo here earlier, but I'll put up a photo of, of the trucks I used to drive. They're three trailer road trains, so pretty big, pretty big monsters, 120 ton plus loaded. And um, so yeah, I've always wanted to get the, the truck um, stick set up and get some Euro Truck Simulator happening. And I finally got around to doing it. I'll put the, the links to, if I can find it, this is the, the box that came in. So you could probably search that part number on AliExpress. Um, but I'll try to find the link and post it. It was, it was quite cheap. So yeah, anyway, let's go for, for a drive. And, I'll, and I'll, firstly, I'll show you how to set up the Arduino and, and stuff. And yeah, see you in a second. So after editing the video, I actually noticed that there's actually a lot of room in here. So I might hide the micro in there. I could trim those wires up, but this is just to see. Oh, look at that. Now it's all hidden in here. And all you've got is a USB cable coming out. Even better. Welcome back. So what we what we want to do is we've got our blank Arduino micro board. So if you look it up here, it's it's actually Arduino micro, come thirteen, nothing on it. We want to put a sketch on it. Um, I'm just going to use this AM Studio 32 function button box. It's simple, um, easily available. So the first thing you want to do is download that from his GitHub and we're going to extract that here. We're then going to open this in Arduino. Okay, now you're going to need a couple libraries in, in order to, to use this. You need keypad.h and joystick.h. So, Easiest way to get keypad.h is go to sketch, go to include library, go to manage libraries. Alright, when that loads up and done, type in keypad.h, search. Now, if you scroll down, there's one here called keypad. Right, you click on install and that one's installed. Now, the other one, joystick.h. There is a joystick.h in there, but that's a different one. It's, it's not the one we want. So don't install that. You'll get um, errors. Um, so we, we've got this other guy. His name's Matthew. Um, Matthew, yep, Hieronymus. He's done one, and that's for um, gamepads. So what we want to do is, if you scroll down to his GitHub, all these links will be in the description, so don't worry. Um, we're going to download this. All right. Now, that extract here now we're going to cut that we're going to go to documents arduino libraries and we're going to paste that there all right i'm not going to do it i've already got it now then you should have your keypad and your arduino joystick library there all right good that's those two done now the issue we have um well, you, you can you can just upload this and go from here, no worries. But what I, I've got a handbrake running on the Arduino Micro as well. So um, you, when you have two Arduino Micros connected to the same computer, some games don't like it and they won't. Well, I need to detect one, if any at all. So uh, it's just like a conflicting piece of hardware because they have the same USB ID um, code. So what I've found is a way to change the name and ID of the Micro. The Pro Micro. Um, I found this. It's off a uh, YouTube video I found, right? And he talks about this guy. He he um, makes MIDI USB devices, and he's he's done this uh, file of his way of changing the ID and name. So it's not technically what you should be doing with USB devices, but anyway, 
We'll download here, download the zip folder. Right, we'll just go back for now and we'll go to our downloads. And, oops. And basically, we're going to extract that. Actually, I'm going to take that. Alright, now if you go to your documents folder, Arduino again, create a folder called hardware. Alright, within that hardware, drop your Messino folder. Alright, I've already done that, so in there you should have this. Now, within those two folders, you get a folder called boards.txt. Now, if you open this, um, this is for Leonardo board and Pro Micro board. So we want to come down to the micro because this is what we're going to be doing. Now this is this is the three lines we want to concern ourselves with now. Um, in here you will have Arduino Micro. Okay. Now rename that to whatever you want. So I'll call it Truck Shifter. And these two here change these last two numbers to uh, six or a seven or anything other than what they are now. Uh, I've already changed these so I forget what the um, originals were. Um, but yeah, just change the last number here and the last number here. So you just copy mine if you want, do a seven and a seven. Now, and I'm just going to call it truck shifter. Happy days. Now you want to save that and we can close a few things here now. If we go back to our, our sketch now, so this Arduino sketch, we open that up. Right, now, usually, just compile that, make sure everything's all right. If, the, if there's an error for libraries, it'll come up, but that's good. So there's no errors. We want to then go, usually you'd go to tools, just like to put on port, so that's good, com 13, that's what my micro is. Now, then you'd go to your board and you'd select your board from this list here, right? But now you have a second list. And this is that Messino thing we just downloaded. Now, we've got the micro, so we want to choose the micro. Now, what this is going to do is when we upload it, it's going to upload it using the different um, USB protocols that we've just set up. The, the name, and as you can see, there you go. Track shift is now being detected. The only issue with this is you may have a one in a thousand chance of putting the same USB code as something else and it may conflict with something else in your system. Very highly unlikely, um, but if it does happen, just change those numbers at the end to something else and that should fix the problem. Now, if we, that's, so that's all, yeah, that's all, as simple as it is. Now, if we go to USB setup, USB game controllers. Now these are the controllers, so now it's showing up as truck shifter. Where usually that would show up as Arduino Micro. Now if we go to properties and we flick some switches. Beautiful. Happy days. Works perfectly. Now um If you look at this diagram, the way I've linked up mine is you can, obviously this is a button matrix, so you can put um, one wire from each of the switches to A3 and then have the other wire go, one go to 14 and one go to 16 and that's only three solder points, no worries, that'll work. Did you have this button linked up and this button linked up? The problem with that is this shifter, the wires are actually quite thick, a quite heavy gauge. I've actually had to cut the wires in half just to fit them through the holes. So you're probably going to have to go one from A3 to 14 and then one from A2 to 16. And that way you've got four wires soldered up. You're still you're getting this button and you're getting this button here. Um, that way, yeah, you're going to have a lot of trouble trying to squeeze two wires in one here. So, um, anyway, that's the way I've got mine set up. And you can pick any button really, it doesn't matter. But so you've got all those extra buttons there. If you, if you actually wanted to just make a little button box with other buttons on it, you can just link up other buttons and use the one, this one board to run everything. 
but I just want this as a standalone shifter with the micro connected in it. I'll, I'll heat shrink or something the micro board and just, well, just the electrical tape it up, and then I'll just you know Velcro that out of the way. So that way, if I want to change to my truck shifter, put my truck shifter on, plug it into the USB. All it all it carries is the two buttons that I care about for the shifter and nothing else. Um, so yeah, that's basically all the setting it up. Oops, stop that. Um, so hopefully that's pretty easy to understand. It's um, not rocket science. And yeah, I hope um, well, we're going to go load up a game and see how see how it works. I haven't played this game in years. I've only played it briefly, really. Um, I'll try to get some motion set up, but I'm going to try to tweak a profile or maybe try someone else's profile and we'll go drive some trucks and see how it feels. All right, see you in a sec. We gotta load onto a boat. <laughs> All right, we're crossing to Denmark now. So, oh, yep, a few bumps there. <laughs> All right, let's embark. Oh, daytime. <laughs> you can feel the, the RPM, the revs and the rig, it's vibrating. It's pretty awesome. Look at that. We can look around the cab. It's a DAF. Not sure what DAF. 
send that back up. Don't know how to get out of here. Oh, we just go straight, I think. Is it going to open? something. Oh yeah. Oh well. Trailers. Should be right. So hopefully we can get out of here okay. supposed to go this way. <laughs> oh, yep, okay, it clicked the barrier. <laughs> uh, Alright, it's hilarious driving on the side I'm used to driving on, but in the left hand drive, a little confusing. 10k is over the limit. I'm gonna get a speeding fine if I'm not careful. Oh yeah, this is awesome. Hundred and forty five Ks to destination. indicated but
girls in. <laughs> Gear's got a, this truck's got one less gear than the Volvo, so I think I'm in the max gear now. Pulling high, oh, I'm in one more split gear. Never knew Denmark drove on the side of the road, to be honest. Oi. Oh, speed around that corner. Do you have a indicator stick? Oh. Bit of elevation there. Oh, it's still recording. 